Radio Impronta Digitale, sono con Tom Bucek, Autodesk Fellow, thanks to be here Tom. And you talk about uh, in your uh, keynote about the link that connects technology, industry and creativity. Could you tell us more? <laughs> that's a, that, that's a an hour huge, yeah. that's an hour topic. Um, well, I think the, sh the, the interesting, the, the message I was trying to deliver was mm -hmm. that technology is growing at an exponential rate. Um, and what that means is that technology is moving faster than ever before. And what's surprising is that we're at the beginning stages of this rapid growth curve. Um, secondly, is that that rapid change is disrupting industries. Industries don't uh, uh, go perfectly in sync with the technology. They are disrupted. Uh, and the reason for that is the, the combination of the, uh, the increased performance that the technology provides, but also the increased democratization where more and more people are able to afford and do this work changes the competitive landscape. And, and finally, I, I uh, speculated on what's the impact of this technology and industry on human creativity. And is creativity increasing or is it decreasing? Is it remaining the same? And my assertion was that, that the human capacity for uh, creativity is constant. We, I think we are no more or more, no less creative than Leonardo da Vinci and, and uh, uh, people living some thousands of years ago who invented the alphabet and, and, and language. Uh, but what's changing are the tools of creative work. And so we can take advantage and multiply this. But I think we need uh, uh, better ways to work. We need a better mindset to work. Okay. Uh, speaking about creativity, uh, you do a, a nice game called the Marshmallow Challenge. Yes. What's that? So uh, there's a design challenge that I, I've run quite a number of times called the Marshmallow mm -hmm. Challenge. And it's a, it's a design exercise where teams of four have to build the tallest freestanding structure out of 20 sticks of spaghetti, one yard of tape, one meter of tape, I'm sorry, one meter of string, and uh, the marshmallow. And the marshmallow needs to be on top. And they have 18 minutes to do this. And it's, it's actually very challenging. And the reason it's challenging is it forces people to collaborate and to do something they haven't done before. Isn't that innovation? Forcing them to collaborate and do something that they haven't done before. And they, there's a bit of a pressure cooker. So what uh, in the exercise most people discover is that um, there's all kinds of things that happen. People spend time seeking power, the, the marshmallow stru uh, structure falls over, and uh, one of the interesting discoveries is that different types or different groups of people with different education and mindsets do differently. So who does very poorly? Well, they're recent graduates of business school, MBA students, just do terribly. Um, and who does very well? Well, um, recent graduates of kindergarten, grade one. Kids do much better than, uh, than the uh, uh, business students. And why does it happen? Well, good question. I mean, I, th I think there's a few reasons. One is that the kids don't s spend time uh, seeking power. Uh, the, the joke I like to say is none of them try to be CEO of Spaghetti Inc. So the social issue does not matter for kids. Well, kids play. That's the second reason. And then thirdly, kids, by the nature of, they work, of their work, or how they kind of work together, is they naturally prototype. Start with the marshmallow, they stick the stick, it falls over. Oh, they do a change, it falls over. And then they do another, another, and, and another, and eventually it, um, they learn through the process of experimentation. Whereas um, MBA students learn differently. They're trained in formal education to have a plan and then to execute on the plan. And that's a problem when you're doing innovative work because uh, there are hidden assumptions, and, and one of the lessons of, it, of this is that the marshmallow has more weight than you think. And so uh, the reason we do that, and so the, that, that, the business students don't build many prototypes. They build one, and it falls over, and there's a crisis. Sound familiar? Yeah, uh, yeah, so, yeah. So the, uh, what we, the reason I do this with, uh, with uh, teams from different companies is to give them the experience and also to give them a common uh, language of uh, innovation, and then thirdly, to figure out what is the marshmallow in their project. What's the hidden assumption that they can then prototype? And uh, that's, that's a very powerful experience. So it helps to change their mindsets a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, you know, as we, 
as we innovate, uh, as working for a technology company, we understand that it's, uh, you know, people need better tools to be able to do the work. But equally important to the tools is the mindset. Understanding what's the problem that you're trying to solve. Because isn't that innovation also? Is it about building, um, uh, you know, a, a better, cheaper one of these devices? But is it also better, cheaper, that feels great in the hand? Oh, it also is sustainable, that doesn't have toxic material in it, and that can be recycled. So the combination of solving many problems simultaneously is, I think, the, the fruits of good design. So if you can solve many problems, we can do better design, and that's the game, the concept of uh, probably your book. So the designer, architects, and the engineering are changing our world. Is this the way? Yeah, absolutely. So the, the, the book that we've just launched is called Imagine, Design, Create, how architects and, and engineers and designers are, uh, are changing our world. And it tells the stories of, of um, well-known and also not so well-known people working in the field who are applying good design. And what I really like about the book is we've structured it in, um, in the way designers think. We ask uh, a number of core questions about design. One being, what is good design? How do you define it? Uh, how do you measure it? Where does design come from? Um, what are the, how, what's the impact of tools on design? Um, how do you design design? How do you... Uh, um, uh, ensure that, that we get smarter over time. And even what's the future of, of, of uh, design? What, are the, what is the future technology? Uh, what is going to do in, in the way we're going to design in the future? So it's the combination of these and with lots of pictures and great pull quotes that I think make it a, an attractive book. Technology helps creativity or sometimes stop it? Uh, both, absolutely, and, and measurable. I th uh, um, we, we are now living in an age where more people can work together with more uh, collaborators to build uh, uh, prototypes of all different things from around the world more cheaply than ever before. So we are in a, you know, the beginning of a golden age of creativity. On the other hand, um, these technologies can give us a, can provide a bias. So we're only solving well, not the bigger problems, and and because we are looking through the world in a uh, through a screen that way, and we forget other parts. It's a very powerful uh, bias. I think also some types of technology, <coughs> excuse me, the the internet and so on, uh, can be addictive, and so we um, uh, are spending more time looking for little bits of information and less time thinking deeply about the information. And at the same time, we still we have the illusion that we can think as broadly as we did before, but, but wait a second, let me just check my phone here. See, <laughs> that's the thing, right? We're continually at the mercy of the technology. So uh, I think that's the downside. So we need, it, we, but we have choice. We need to just use it effectively. Okay. Um, while Autodesk is projecting their software, uh, they're also thinking about how the user uh, feel using their software. So sometimes you can be also a little bit frustrated uh, using some interface. Does mm -hmm. it matter for the production of the software? Oh, it's central. I think um, our the experience of a of a person using the software. We have brilliant people and, uh, and and large teams that study this on a day to day basis. So some of the software that we we have. Um, quite literally is kind of like a, it's, it's, it's designed to be discovered and uh, some of the sketching tools, for sketchbook for example, available on a, uh, you know, iPhones and tablets and, and uh, Android devices are, are really about um, uh, uh, providing the simplest experience to produce wonderful technology, uh, wonderful results. Um, then there is other software that's really designed to optimize the complexity. Um, but. But uh, we spend an, uh, we spent as much time, I think, designing the um, implementation of the technology, the user interface, as we do designing the technology itself. Because in a way, it's kind of an extension of your thinking and of your nervous system. Is there a path, maybe for education too, um, to create more uh, general uh, mindset, and not being too um, strict and uh, narrow-minded? So. Uh, think more creative. I think uh, the value of creativity has never been more important. I think uh, it, it is something that should be taught 
as, an, as a requirement, there's a discipline of creativity. Just, just as we do what, whatever you want, but I think there are fundamental capabilities and skills that we need to foster in school. What are those? I think the ability to uh, reframe problems and understand uh, a situation from multiple points of view, 360 degree, 60 degrees is, is critical. The ability to truly collaborate with others. Um, in school, that's often called cheating. <laughs> but, but, you know, that's the way the world works. We need to be able to work with people with different skills and to respect those skills and bring the very best uh, out. What's the way to do that? What are the ways to do that? We need to be able to build prototypes of all different types of, you know,